Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm a normal, boring HR person uh, talking about change, and this is why we are here today. Um, change and business shifts. Um, I suppose most of you should be familiar. Um, I would like to see some hands up if you have experienced in the past the change in your teams, in your projects, in your companies. Most of you, I would expect. Yeah, fab. So it sounds familiar, I guess, and this is why we are here today. Um, we have something in common. Uh, some baseline, let's say, about us. Um, historically, all win lottery solutions, formerly known as Camelot Lottery Solutions, was focused on providing, delivering actually, projects around iLotteries, instant win games, data platforms. There was a change coming over this path, and the change was that after all wins acquisition, there was a decision made from the leadership to focus on a more product-oriented uh, approach um, in order to serve and, let's say, create some value for the Olwyn Group. The Olwyn Group has a number of companies under its umbrella focusing on eye lotteries, on lotteries and casinos across Europe and uh, US. So, leadership initiated this transition to a product-centric strategy and we had somehow to make this work focused, and we still try to do so, focused on quality, on innovation, and on flexibility. I'm here today to discuss about the lessons we learned up to now, because we have more to learn, and share them with you. We are not done, obviously. We have more to follow. But uh, at least I hope we are enjoying the, the groove. Um, why leadership is imperative in times of change? And that's quite important to, to understand. Um, the main point is that we, as cheesy as it may sound, Peter Drucker was right. The best way to predict the future is to try to create it. And this means that somehow everyone can adjust and have an impact on what's coming next. What's coming next in the business, what's coming next in my team, what's coming next to, to a wider business uh, part. The main part of all those changes, let's say, is the, is the leadership. It's the engineering leadership, the, the middle management, the level that has the impact in the teams and in the people. Plays a very crucial role and tries to keep aligned the teams and what they deliver, what they pro produce, with the vision that's coming on the back of the business. It needs a basic and but very deep understanding of both the business acumen, but also the technology that can provide us the solutions that we need. Another very important element, based on our experience, um, that supports this process is the effective communication. And the effective communication is key in this process of change and this journey, mainly because it's very important for the teams and the people that you're working with to understand the why, why this change is needed, why we need to take this decision, why we need to use this technology, or why we need to make another change on whatever we have already decided and discussed. Beyond that communication level, it's also much more important to discuss about inspire, inspiration of the people, and how we can make this happen, how we can make motivate them give them a sense of purpose, and also encourage them to, to start working on a creative... Yeah, I'm back. Encourage them to, to start thinking on a creative problem-solving approach. We need that taking ownership that they can provide to the teams, and we need to activate it. So, what are the key leadership lessons from our journey? and how we try to control our own destiny. Leadership is not just about giving directions to people and to the teams. It's about creating an environment where people can grow, can develop themselves, can create value for them, but also for the business. There are two elements that need to be served in that discussion. We need strong leadership 
technical leadership, engineering leadership, that can be well respected from the teams, that have the recognition from the teams, and they can provide solutions and can hear to the people. On top of all of that, meaning or discussing about a change around, let's say, project delivery to product uh, creation, it also needs a cultural shift. So let's see and dive in on the main lessons that we wanted to share with you today. The first one is being honest. And being honest means that during this, that transition, that change period, there will be elements that will be moving parts, let's say, many unknowns, things that we cannot recognize, things that we cannot foresee. On that level, it is important as a leader to openly recognize that gaps and make sure that the team also understands that you don't know. And it's super fine to admit that you don't know because that level of recognition gives them also the psychological safety, let's say, that it's also okay for them not to know things. It's also okay for them to find out moving forward. There is a huge complexity behind change and how we manage change and giving them the feeling that they can hide behind this change and the things that we don't know, it's quite problematic. So by encouraging the open dialogue and let them raise their voice or concerns or questions or provide them the, the baseline of where they can make questions like why, why this is happening, why we took this decision, why, why we're moving towards that direction or the other. Um, providing this baseline should be done without being fear, feeling fear or being judged. It's very important to create that blame-free culture. Another one from us, flexibility. Try to apply agile leadership. And what that means, try to be flexible when adapting your processes, your ways of working. Things are changing, priorities are changing. Important decisions might change. And thus, the, the leadership needs to be the first one who accepts that change. They need to be open and to change, obviously. And this means that they lead by example. The team will never know all the information. The team will never know what's coming, same as you. And by recognizing those gaps, you will also give them the opportunity to feel safe in that. By demonstrating that growth and that adaptation, let's say, to the change, and explaining that this is an ongoing process, gives you some time to create more value and bring them in the journey. Another very important note from us is um, breaking silos and driving, actually, cross-functional collaboration. Cross-functional collaboration will create the value, and I'm not just talking about business versus technology. I'm also talking between teams across the technology function. There needs to be collaboration. There needs to be different ideas. There needs to be exchange of information. Leaders are the one, actually, that have to create that level of um, communication between the teams. They need to drive it, and they also have to somehow protect it. They have to create the regular touch points through the teams will be actually available, let's say, or able to discuss, to raise concerns, to, open, to openly discuss about what's coming or what's not working. Doing this through meetings, through, I don't know, regular discussions in the office. These meetings should promote transparency, first of all, problem solving, and collective ownership of what's coming. It's not my decision, it's not my 
responsibility, it's ours. And this is the main message, that breaking down the silos should be the way to reach out. So, now that we have discussed about breaking down silos, about embracing and understanding that we don't know everything, and that's fine, it's time that you need to start bringing in some fresh ideas, some new things, some new ideas. We have to accept the fact that we need diversity in the teams. And when building up teams, we should be ready to identify that and bring on people that are different, that might have a different management style or a communication style from what we have. Different age, different uh, gender, different nationality. All of that diversity in the teams will allow you to bring more ideas, to create more groundbreaking th processes of thoughts, let's say. And how we create resilient teams? There is a, um, there is a very important element in all of that um, process, which is how we promote a mindset where change is not seen as a threat, but is seen as an opportunity. And through that process and through understanding that this, there is an opportunity, there is a very big opportunity also for your people to start upskilling and reskilling and learning new stuff, learning new technologies, learning new uh, behavioral parts, or for example, as we discussed previously, how I can embrace diversity in my teams, or how I should manage that, or what diversity means. There are elements also in your day-to-day -day that could help you promote and create that resilience in the teams. For example, constant feedback, discussing openly with your teams and the people around you about what's going on, what's going on well, and what, what can be fixed at the end of the day. And there are sessions and there are times in the, the, the ways of working that could be super useful, like your one-on-ones with them. Try to build the trust and that process of communication and safety to also share with you their, their thoughts, their ideas, what, what concerns they might have, and bring this on in order for you to, to use it and create something better for them as an experience in the team. And there are two elements here. Investing time, your time mainly, and your people's time, and company's money. Through change periods, there, are, there will be times that you will have, let's say, more packed as a schedule. You will have no time, nothing left. But there will also be times where you will have free time for your teams. And this comes as the product grows or the teams are building up. We are going through different life cycles. So investing your, this time and your time and your people's time at the end of the day, but also company's money to train your people in the technologies and the technologies that you are about to use in the future, to build up the products that um, you are planning to based on your strategy, follow the development of what's coming next, what's, what's following up on that. It's a very important element and it needs very precious, let's say, focus and time to discuss this during your one-on-ones. So those one-on-ones, I've mentioned that too many times, but I think, indeed, I believe that they, they bring value on what we're trying to do. Treat them with respect and be focused and devoted, which means that through that process, you will be able to create that safety and you will have also the option to hear what they, what they fear, what's, the, what's their fear, what they're afraid of. Because obviously, through the, this whole process, people will have questions. They will have uncertainty. They will have all of those feelings that might not be very positive, let's say, and you will have to deal with that. So discussing openly about uncertainty and what's in their mind will also give you some insights of how you could manage it better. The last part on the investment discussion is about engagement. You invest time and company's money, again, 
to make this work. So why you, you don't also invest in their engagement? Make them, make them want to stay with you. Show them what's in there for them. This journey, at some point, will start shaping a bit more clear, let's say. What should they expect for that? What's in, them? What's in there for them? They need to see the challenges. They need to see what might be difficult. They need to see the, the differences, but they also need to see the opportunities. Enough with the, the boring uh, HR presentation. A closing with four key takeaways from us is that the leadership is the driving force in any change. And this, is, this must be understanding, understandable from everyone who is in that position, but also from the management of the companies. Try to be an empathetic leader, which means that try to listen to what they feel, what they, what they want to share with you, create that psychological safety in the team. And this will drive you 50% of the road of this journey of the change. Engineering teams, and to be honest, every team, not just engineering teams, in general teams, thrive when they have the right leaders by their side. And by the right leaders, we talk about vision, we talk about being able to adapt to change and also empower their people. And we like it or not, as we've seen previously, lots of us have experiencing change, and this is something that constantly will happen to the businesses. The journey of change is constant and will never stop. It will be ongoing. And the leadership will, will always remain at the, at the core, at the, at the main, let's say, solution during this change period in order for this to succeed. Thank you.